Hello, everyone. Well, I uh, maybe we can like wait two minutes more and then start. Hello, Maud. Hi. Hello. Hello, morning. Morning. Um, may I ask people around the screen maybe to turn your camera on if you're okay with that? <laughs> it would be a bit more <laughs> uh, like better for me <laughs> to talk to real people <laughs> thanks a lot <laughs> it's easier because if not i'm like in front of uh, uh, black screens <laughs> hi. hi we are real people indeed yes i know you are <laughs> <laughs> makes me think of all professors making their courses during uh, covid with only black screens of old students turning their camera off. And I think it was quite kind of awful sometimes. Is this just an online presentation meeting? Today, this one? This one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm not in Barcelona. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a bit uh, like hotter there, but um, I don't know if we should start, even if uh, I don't know if people are really go. As far as my experience in this week, <laughs> there are delays in every session. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Five, ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nor normal. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So let's wait maybe five minutes more and then we start. So have you attended a lot of other sessions this week? I tried a few, but uh, I didn't manage all of them. Mm. Yeah, a few of them at all. So I attended the, the, the closed session because I'm uh, at work, uh, work back at six members. So we had some uh, closed sessions. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah.
Well, uh, maybe let's start the session and we'll see if people join. And uh, if not, it's okay. <laughs> Um, so thank you for attending this session. So I'm uh, Mucha Sand. I'm working at ESSEC Business School in France uh, in the Strategy and Sustainability Department. And I tell you a bit more about that. And we are here today to talk about environmentally friendly international student mobility with a question mark, because of course it's a big question and we don't have a... Uh, we don't have obvious solutions regarding this issue, and that's why we're here today. And uh, what I'd like to do is make a very interactive session. I've not planned to talk for uh, an hour and a half alone, and I really, I really like to to make it um, yes interactive to get your views so uh, that we can discuss and uh, this topic to understand. Uh, if you have the same issues within your universities and so on. So maybe to start with, we can make a short run table for me to know who is around the screen. And so that we, yes, uh, we can have a, a geographic view of uh, everyone around the screen. So maybe I'll give the micro to uh, Edite. I don't know if I'm pronouncing well. Olivera, Oli, Edite Olivera. Ah. Oui, oui, c'est parfait, oui. Uh, um, sorry, sorry. Uh, right. Um, so um, I, I'm I'm uh, from Nova, that's why I'm a psychologist at uh, Nova University of, of Lisbon, and um, I, I'm interested in. Uh, um, Erasmus mobility, uh, but it is not my uh, my department here. Um, it's the department of my colleague uh, is here, or Jose Conchinha. So uh, I'm here because I'm uh, interested in and uh, for uh, my curiosity, in fact. Nice, thanks. Uh, maybe Elena. Hi, I'm Helena. I work at the Office of International Relations of the University of Ljubljana, and I'm in charge of incoming uh, Erasmus students, mostly. <laughs> and I also work in Utopia uh, in Work Packet 6. Nice. Uh, Joanna? Um, yes, hello. Uh, so I'm Johanna. I'm working actually with Maud at ESSEC Business School in the context of uh, CY also, and, but I'm working uh, rather on the research side. So, uh, but uh, I um, have evaluated Erasmus um, projects and especially international uh, credit mobility projects. So I'm always interested in, in these uh, topics as well. Thanks. Uh, I don't know if um, Hannah, Pia, and Miria are here. Uh, Hi, I'm Hi. here. Uh, my name is Pia. I also work at the University of Ljubljana, like Helena, but at its veterinary faculty at the international office. So I cover everything Erasmus related, student mobility related. Nice. Thanks. Hello, Hannah. Hello. Can yes, we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> um. Oh, uh, so I'm, I'm I'm a student at the University of Ljubljana, and well, mostly I'm here to learn. So. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's good for a student. <laughs> to be here to learn. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot. And maybe Mireya doesn't seem to be here. So I'll go ahead. And uh, if she wants to present herself, she can do it later on. So maybe a small introduction of, uh, uh, yes, so, a small introduction of ESSEC Business School, where um, Joanna and myself are working so that you understand a bit because um, 
in France, uh, universities and schools are it's a quite specific system. So maybe it's uh, good for you to have in mind who business who ESSEC is as a business school. So um, we are a school where yes, so we have a lot of alumni around the world. And uh, maybe more important here is to know that we have some um, pre-experience program, what we call pre-experience program, meaning that we have a bachelor and we have some masters uh, in, in our school, but we also have a lot of uh, executive education. And uh, what's specific in our business school is that you can enter both uh, after the baccalaureate, so your um, um, I don't know how you call that in English, but anyway, we can enter after you your school, and but you can also enter this school after what we have in France called prep class, um, which are uh, two years of uh, intensive uh, school before entering uh, your your master, and that's quite specific to the to the French uh, ecosystem. And uh, yes, ESSEC Business School is one of the top ranked business school in France. And what explained that we are here today is that we have a very strong alliance with uh, CY University because we are also located in Sergi Pontoise. And so we've started to work uh, very closely with uh, the university so that we, yes, uh, have more interaction and we were very glad of this uh, alliance and maybe if you have questions about that uh, Joanna is, is a good person to ask so that's why also we are here today within this uh, uh, Utopia alliance. Um, at ESSEC we define our mission to be to infuse tomorrow's leadership with meaning which is a very ambitious program and uh, to do that, of course, we make it very uh, specific and we have a uh, very, very concrete action plans. And um, I'm actually working within the team, working on the sustainability transformation. So we decided to make sustainability a very um, like a crucial topic for us to address because we are very, um, like we really understand our responsibility to take these issues into account and to better uh, integrate them within our courses, within our programs, but also as an institution and as an organization. So we also try to uh, to change the way that we we make um, our jobs in our daily activities. And we have these strategies based on three main objectives being to provide answers to environmental challenges, but also to, find, to fight against social inequalities and to drive transformation like um, outside our walls, because we consider that our responsibility is not only to change ourselves, but also to try and have some influence uh, in our ecosystem and more broadly to have some positive impact on society because at the end that's uh, of course uh, the aim so we try to work both on environmental and social and societal uh, issues at the same time and we do that uh, as uh, i don't know if i no, i've not uh, put the slide but we do that both on our education and within our program so it's our core activity but we also try to um to in like push these topics within our research by uh, like uh, trying to to have some new uh, alliances uh, on research and maybe try to recruit some experts on these topics so this is not the easiest part because of course uh, um, researchers are very like they have their own expertise when they arrive so it's not uh, that easy but it's a very important topic for us and the third thing we're we are working on as I was uh, telling a bit earlier is to like really transform our campus life both in terms of 
environmentally friendly um, uh, like infrastructures, but also uh, on social uh, issues. So we have a very strong um, uh, respect for what we call respect for others policy, meaning that we fight uh, against all kind of discrimination. We also have a lot of uh, um, thoughts about integration, how we make our own schools more inclusive. So this is really a um, 360 plan and really try to address all the topics. But today we'll make a focus more on an uh, um, environmental topic because um, that's the point when we talk about um, um, about uh, mobility and just a point of context when we decided to make this uh, very to take this uh, this strong uh, strategic axis we took this uh, this uh, commitment to reduce by 25 percent our carbon emissions and we decided to do that within three years so um, our the first uh, time we made our like the um, starting point was in 2019 but with the covid period we think that it's more relevant to uh, see what happens uh, in one more year because of course uh, the figures this year and in terms of mobility <laughs> will be very different and uh, not really relevant um so this is our objective and you'll see that the link between our topics today and this objective because this is for you to know the our carbon footprint at ESSEC this is the main part of this uh, this carbon footprint analysis so as you can see uh, the main part is obviously travels because when we made this uh, carbon footprint analysis, we decided to uh, go until scope three. I don't know if you're uh, uh, familiar with, uh, with uh, carbon footprint analysis, but scope three means that we took into account all the travels made by our students in the, the um, uh, like only the academic related travels, but we took that into account. So that's why that is so important because of course we are an international business school and uh, for our students to be graduated, they need to go abroad. So that's a big part of travels because if I go into this, uh, this 77% um, part, and I make a focus on that, um, you'll see that the main part of this impact comes from student mobility because we could thought it's uh, more about staff mobility, faculty mobility, but not in our school, it's more student related mobility. Um, I think that's a specificity because when I compared to what happening in some university around the world um, the main part of their travel impact is about uh, faculty mobility and um, i think it's uh, so that's another way to address this issue when it comes to faculty uh, transportation so here today the focus is more about student related mobility not meaning that we are not going to work on uh, faculty mobility, but it's all other um, solution that we have to design for that part. So our aim, so we launched a big, uh, a big work group last year in order to address this, uh, this topic of, um, of mobility as a big uh, part of our carbon footprint and linked with the objective that I told you earlier to, to reduce by 25% our, our carbon impact. And um, we also started from this uh, assessment, which is that from until now, we had the aim at ESSEC to 
offer a very good international student mobility for our students to become what we call global leaders, meaning that we deeply think that international experience can offer open-mindedness. Um, it's a way for our students to learn from others, to discover other cultures, to confront to intercultural diversity. Um, and these are, uh, we think, very key um, skills when it comes to then working in any big company, uh, whether it is international or not, because even in like for our students working in a French company, then you always be confronted to intercultural diversity. So we think it's a way to learn how to handle that. But the aim with um, all the environmental challenges that we have to face is to make our students both global leaders, but, responsi but also responsible global leaders. And that comes by integrating this thought about our environmental impact when going abroad and uh, how we can also take that into account when making a decision of going abroad. And that's why we thought about, well, what are the ways for this mobility to have the lower possible impact? What we did to do that first is to ask ourselves what are the activities that we take into account when thinking about reducing the impact of mobility. And we decided to think about both academic exchanges, internships, and study trips. And we also inter intercampus mobility, yes, because what I didn't tell, what I haven't told so far is that we are based in Sergi Pontoise, which is uh, close to Paris, in the Great Paris area. But we also have a campus in Singapore and we have a campus in Rabat in Morocco. So, of course, it's not very close to, to Paris. Um, so, yes, we decided to focus on these trips, which are academic related trips. And for now, we put apart the leisure trips that our students do because that's their own responsibility. But we think that. By making them aware of uh, these uh, these challenges, we hope that it's also a way for them to uh, think about these kind of uh, issues where when making some decision for their own um, trips and their own mobility. Um, then we asked ourselves, what are the levers? Or in which we can rely to, to improve this carbon mobility, uh, carbon impact. And there are three ways of doing so, is that reducing distance. So it's a way of thinking about the destination that you're going to, to go to. Then there is a question of frequency, how much, uh, how many times you, you travel within your, um, your studies. And then there's a question of means of transportation, because of course it's not the same to go somewhere by bike or to fly to somewhere. But it's not easy to go to, to bike from uh, Sergi to Singapore. So of course, uh, there are other questions raised. And uh, the last point we had in mind was that we do not want to like we want to, to sensitize and to incentivize, but we are not here to, uh, for at the first step, we do not want to put a lot of constraint to our students because we, we'd rather make them more aware and make, help them make um, more um, informed decisions, but, Constraining them is not really in our philosophy, so that's um, another part. But we, we first of, of all, we want to try to uh, sensitize and incentivize, and we hope that it's enough for them to make uh, other decisions when talking about their mobility. And based on that, we had a lot of workshop involving both students, alumni, uh, professors, our um, international mobility team and all the, the people involved in, 
in this uh, in this topic and that was very interesting to see the different interests uh, um, around the table and to to see what were the main obstacles and uh, there are a lot of fears also around that so maybe we can talk about that in the discussion part but it was very it was an interesting way to do so and these workshops were very helpful to engage everyone and to have a common uh, a common ground in order to then make some decisions and uh, find the best possible actions and that's what we did in the second part so we we have gathered our action plans run two main axes and then we have a lot of details about what we we are to do but the main axes are first to adapt our international mobility offer and i'll tell a bit more that, about that and that would be the more in, in, impactful part and then we really think that um, our responsibility to encourage students to adopt more sustainable mobility habits by making a lot of sensitization and by um, giving them also the good information because sometimes there is a lack of information so we can expect our students to make uh, uh, to make uh, choices uh, uh, if we don't give them the the good uh, information to make these choices. So concerning the first act um, about adapting our international mobility offer, the point here is to, to question ourselves about, okay, what, what are the, as so far, what are the travel that we cannot um, avoid in um, in a student uh, uh, path around the uh, ESSEC because um, in our programs we have between six or um, 12 mandatory months abroad so to be graduated a student depending on the program is following but um, he has to do between six months of uh, international experience and 12 months of ex international experience. So um, this is something mandatory so far. So maybe that could be a question, but okay, is it, why is it like that? But of course, then as you, you know, we are all uh, within uh, international rankings and that's also something uh, that is uh, required within these rankings. Well, but within the, um, the whole studies, there are these mandatory months where we ask students to go to internship, when we ask them to go to some exchange program, they have the choice so they can whether make some internship or go uh, for an exchange or go to um, another ESSEC campus. But then we also have some um, uh, study trips because in some specific programs when our students make some um, specializations and especially in their masters, then they sometimes there are some very short study trips and these are like, some additional trips so our so to, to say okay maybe on these trips we can ask um, master uh, coordinators to to stay in Europe because going abroad for six months might be okay but going uh, very far away only for three days is uh, we think not acceptable anymore so that was also the way we we thought about that and the other thing was to um, to say, okay, when our students go to Europe, maybe there's a way to uh, incentivize them to to uh, go by train or bus rather than taking the flights. And it was the same of the main measures we take within this act, saying that we are to reimburse a part of the students' train or bus um, ticket for their internship or program exchanges. 
this is something, and we can also discuss that after, but uh, it's something that is planned within the new Erasmus Convention, but waiting for the application uh, phase, we decided that we will do that um, from this year and uh, see how then it can, um, it can be linked with the Erasmus um, new convention. And uh, yes, I was, as I was telling, uh, we also are to reduce the distance of all the short trips. Um, and uh, these short trips will now only be within uh, Europe so that we don't have, yes, very small uh, trips uh, in very far destinations. So these are the main measures and then we have a lot of all uh, in progress. And then um, when it comes to encouraging students to adopt more sustainable mobility habits, we think there are a lot of things that we can do. And uh, yes, we're trying to implement them uh, one by one. But um, a first uh, reflection we have, and we are not, we're still not uh, totally ready for that, but um, we think that we we have to provide them with the good information, being uh, like uh, maybe giving the um, emissions, uh, the CO2 emissions related when you take uh, the fly or when you take the bus for each or each destination. Uh, we think that could be a good tool to provide our students, like for them to have an information about the um, carbon emissions related to their own mobility, that would be a very um, a strong tool for them to realize exactly um, individually what they are to, to do. And maybe it's a way for them to decide uh, to make some other decisions. Um, so that's very, the, the core of the reflection about uh, raising awareness, because of course we are to make uh, some uh, um, communications about our, our, the measures we take. We are to make uh, some, uh, uh, yes, uh, frequent communication, but sometimes um, a tool very linked to the individual choices of each student can be more powerful than some general communication. So that's really something that we're going to work on. And uh, the second thing is to promote some original and innovative best practices that our students can have. And we are to launch, to launch um, a challenge uh, between the students to like give uh, small uh, fun for uh, very innovative projects. And um, the photos I put, the first one uh, with the, the bag is one of our students who decided this summer to go from Sergi to Helsinki by bike. And um, we gave him a small, uh, a small burst to reinforce a part of, um, of his travel. And we think it's, um, of course, it will remain very, very, very few uh, students deciding to do that. But we think it's powerful in terms of uh, communication and changing minds and making it possible in the mind of uh, students to have some different uh, ways of thinking the travel. And it's also a way to give back some value within the travel itself, because of course it's uh, much easier and it's uh, much shorter to go to Helsinki <laughs> by flying there, but what this student gained from all these adventures is so precious that it's also a way to say there is a value in the travel itself. And we want to encourage this kind of um, experience and adventures to, yes, raise another kind of awareness about what traveling means. and. Um, it's also a way to, I don't know, make it more real because when flying to somewhere, we think that 
the world is very accessible and everything is our, just close to us. But when you're traveling uh, by other means, then you realize how how broad is the world, and uh, that's also a way for students to to have some yes yeah, some kind of uh, open mind in this. So that's also something we want to encourage. But we are conscious that it will be only a few uh, a few students. Um, Sorry, can, well, can I can I just ask how long did he travel to Helsinki? Yeah, it took him two months. Oof. Okay. Yeah. And he, it was two months, and uh, he told me that he wanted to, you know, take some time, and uh, and uh, so it was two months. But then there are some uh, very specific locations where he spent uh, uh, three days, four days to enjoy uh, the natures and uh, the landscapes. And so it, it was like very it was he was a very nice guy and uh, it was an amazing adventure so and very nice to follow because you know he was at, um, on instagram he had his uh, his account and it was posted uh, every day um, a recap of his uh, adventures and it was very nice to follow um well, so that's all for my presentation, and I think what could be interesting, maybe we can make take some time um, for questions, and then uh, an open discussion about how it goes in your university. Is it a, a topic, a, like new topic, or is it something that you've been working on for a long time? I would be very glad to have yes, some feedback and to have your views on this topic. So maybe some questions first, if you have some. Oh. Yes, if I can just ask. Uh, the funds for for the what well, that you uh, uh, reimburse to your students are from where <laughs> your own fund yeah institutional uh, funds yeah in, it's um, funds that we take from the program so it's a uh, part of the budget of the program that is uh, allocated for this reimbursement um, so we decided that. It's a good way of uh, investing this money, but of course it's a cost. And um, but uh, yes, a choice to make uh, to make this uh, to use this money like that. But uh, we have not uh, raised any other funds to do that. It's only our, our own funds. But we don't exactly know how much at, at the end of the day, we don't know if it would be it would be so costly because um, we don't, yes, for now, as it's a new measure and we only start um, at the beginning of uh, next year, we don't really know how many students will ask, uh, how many of them will make the choice to take the train rather than taking um, the flight. So it's quite hard to know by now. So we are going to make a lot of communication about that and then uh, we'll see. And I can, I can tell you like next year what it has, uh, what, it, what it led to. Maud, how, how do the students react actually when you know you are doing this communication? Do they give some feedback? Do they, what is their um, uh, reaction if, if you have any uh, feedback? Um, yes, uh, I think students are very glad that we give them uh, some more money to travel abroad. And of course, the part of our students who are very, very involved in sustainability topics 
are very glad to see that we have some uh, um, incentivization for them to travel without uh, flying to their destination. But like all the topics, uh, the sustainability related topics, we have a small part of our students that are really committed to these topics that are glad that we take these measures. But then we also have some students, um, I think that have kind of a fear that in some years we like prevent them from going abroad, we prevent them from uh, traveling around the world. So that's also a fear within the students to ensure that they still uh, will have the choice uh, to go wherever they want to go. So we have to deal with these two kind of students. And uh, yes, sometimes it's uh, <laughs> sporty. <laughs> I don't know if it's also something that you see in your universities. Um, I don't know, Helena, is it something that... Well, <clears throat> we are a very big university and we uh, do not have a campus, you know. We are, our faculties are spread around the town, so uh, it's very difficult to, um, well, to, to, to lead some some this kind of 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 incentive at the university level so um, there are faculties that are more more aware and faculties that are less aware so it depends also on on their uh, nature well on their expertise so that would, on the programs and on the on the topics that they offer so i'm sure there's something going on at the faculty level for sure but at the university level we still haven't um, gone in this direction uh, but uh, with with Erasmus plus and with the new new uh, extra for green travel and so on we will now we just uh, yesterday my colleague prepared the call for 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 a new program so uh, we will see what the reaction of the students will be how well as the year go goes by we'll see how many how many students decided to travel by train or by bus or by car so yeah but i can hardly um imagine that uh, you, you mentioned the short the the destination that you will short you know the select the institutions that are closer um i i can't <laughs> uh imagine that that the faculties will now when the new program is on and they uh they want to uh, reconsider the cooperation with with some of the universities that they will take into account, ex especially this uh, this uh, moment. You know, so it's still yeah we are in in a wearing process. I would say at our university, we have new rector now, so he is more he he comes from the veterinary uh, faculty, so uh, he already expressed some some notions that about the the the, the awareness of the uh, of the ecology and so on so we'll see how how systematically it will it will evolve and do you have some like are some um, some uh, questions or new demands from students is it, is it some a growing topic are students asking you to better take that into account or? May I uh, also add to Helena? Hello. Hi, hi. <laughs> uh, no, no, so far they haven't. So far we have spent the Erasmus money from our old project. So where the green travel was not, uh, uh, there were no special money to uh, award to students for green traveling. And uh, only with January of 2022, we will start using the money from Erasmus 21 project. And there, the nove novelty about the green travel was introduced. So we will see now how many students will take advantage of that. We will, of course, promote that. 
and not not only travel but also um, everything that's uh, uh, in the connection with uh, sustainability and with uh, recycling and uh, taking care of the planet and environment and uh, everything that's uh, that's uh, in, in this in this sense we will promote it uh, on our information days on every uh, activity that will be going on on the departmental and faculty level and as well uh, from us from the central level that's for sure but uh, I think this takes a little bit time. It, it's not very, uh, the students will respond each year better. So mm -hmm. it, it's like a snowball. When it starts rolling, then they, it will be bigger and uh, they will be more aware of the problem. Although I, I'm sure that younger generation is quite aware of the problem, much more than we, the older generation. Uh, so. I have high hopes for that, yes. We have a green officer in our uh, office. We appointed one person who is, a, who is in charge for promoting green mobility. And uh, I think um, we will succeed. And are the students uh, traveling a lot in Europe or do they go? Mostly, 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 yeah. mostly in Europe, yes. We don't have so many exchanges or uh, other uh, kind of mobilities uh, outside of Europe. We have some, but not many. Most, mm. uh, like 90% of our mobilities are done within Europe. Mm. Yeah, so it makes it even more plausible to have students use a green mobility. Absolutely, absolutely. Than when going uh, very far away. Many, many of them use it, have used it already yeah. without this extra funding. But now yeah. when they will see, okay, I can get 50 euro more and I can get some more uh, finance days, it will yeah. be attractive to students for sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah, because that's also a point when you have to take uh, some more time to go somewhere. Sometimes yeah. it's not that easy to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the train connections are not that easy within Europe. That's 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 true. Yes, and if they have this opportunity to get four extra days, it's yeah. great. Yes, yes, we are we are very uh, happy uh, uh, with this uh, decision of the Commission. Yes, mm. I think it's uh, the step into the right direction. Mm. Mm. Yes. Um. Are there other, I don't know, questions, remarks, some testimonies? Have you I would just eaten? like to add, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm Sara from Nova in Portugal, that uh, in our uh, specific situation, um, the, the train or the green travel for, for students might be, is, is, is something for us to think about as a country. And it, it's also aligned with the, the national strategy for a railway uh, for the next decades. Um, because for instance, to go from Lisbon to Madrid, which is a one hour flight, um, when compared to train travel, it takes around 12 times more, around 12 hours. Uh, around uh, 10 to 12 hours. It's, yes. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's, it's even worse because now we don't have that train anymore. <laughs> yes, because of the pandemics, either for for Spain or the one going to to, Han, uh, to Andai, to France through Pais Basco. Thank you, Zé. So now railway to travel at the, the community, the, the European level is not um, an option. So I would just like to add that and uh, how we strongly believe that the Erasmus might actually enhance some national decisions as far as the railway is, uh, is concerned. Yeah, that's right. And uh, that's a huge topic because of course it, it is like broader than uh, our university as a small organization but uh -huh. at the same time it's 
a very important topic. And of course, within all the countries right now, there is some incentive to go into more uh, greener uh, plants. Yes. So, but a uh, good part of it in, in France, I know that there's a, um, a new plan that was decided, I don't know, maybe this year, I, I have, I don't have the exact date, but there's a plan to um, redeploy the night trains. There are a lot of uh, night trains and that was uh, for uh, other European um, countries connections. And they were deleted, I don't know in exactly when, but at the beginning of um, the century. And there were some petitions coming from uh, environmental um, uh, parties and they, these petitions required these lines to be to get back to their activity and so there are some new night trains that are going to to be yes back on tracks and i think there's one from paris to vienna i think there was also to italy to spain but yes then we have the same uh, topic as you were telling sarah is that for instance from paris to go to madrid we take two hours and a half flying, and uh, it's like a whole day if you want to take some other means of transportation. So of course it's, and especially when you're a student and that's not so, that, that can be quite uncomfortable. You don't yes. know the countries, not very secure sometimes to, you don't feel secure when you have to travel this way which we can understand as well. But then if I may, and, and this is more input from a traveler actually, <laughs> it's like uh, what you said before, Maud, when you were giving the example of the student who, who went to Helsinki for his internship by bike, and then there, there is the journey, the travel itself as well. So instead of traveling like 12 hours in a row, you can also travel for, for the weekend and say, okay, I, I take my time and uh, I will have a stopover here in this city and I will have a, a coffee somewhere or so, whatever. So so th there is also maybe the mentality change. Like we are used to everything should be rapid, quick. We should go quickly from one point uh, to another. But maybe we can also change this, this state of mind saying, OK, I, actually, why I should, shouldn't I travel for a weekend or for three days and with a very cheap uh, traveling or take the night train? And indeed, I, I, uh, they, they will reopen these, um, these uh, lines. and. Yeah, maybe there is also something to at stake here, like how can we uh, change our way of traveling, saying taking more time, you know? So it's, yeah, that there is the, the, the whole infrastructure situation, which is different if, depending on the places in Europe. All the countries are not uh, so well connected, uh, like, like France is with train, trains all over the place. And, um, like in Germany or in the north of Europe, but um, yeah, maybe maybe this is also the the opportunity to say, okay, let's let's think of how can we make this uh, situation, how can we take the positive side of it? But uh, I know it's it's like it's not that easy, but uh, yeah. Uh, and Jana, would you have some ideas about what we can do as as schools or universities to? Um, to, I don't know, to better, um, to help change these mentalities, are you aware of saying? Well, I don't know. I, uh, I was thinking as, for example, uh, you know, with Erasmus uh, uh, projects, for example, um, there is one one thing that is usually asked is how is how are you promoting, for example, the the, uh, the exchanges uh, of the students so through social media and things like this. So the idea could be showing also the travel the travel part. You know, N not only the, the the meeting with the students uh, or in the other university, but also the the journey. Like uh, the journey is part of the of the. Um, the learning you know and um this is for yeah this could be one way is uh, emphasizing also uh how do you go from uh, paris to madrid for example that takes you could it could take three days if you take the time and and then you can also promote 
what did you do on the on the journey so it could be part of the actually the exchange uh, itself and uh, not only focusing on the, the the studies or the universities or the the things like the these concrete things but also on the whole journey and i think um I mean, in, in the spirit of uh, Erasmus um, Plus um, uh, projects, it, that's the idea of soul. I mean, traveling is, is learning. So that would be maybe one solution, one idea um, promoting on social media and or, I don't know, or yeah. Instagram. Uh, like, for example, the, the example you gave was, was quite interesting, I think. Uh, yeah. Even if, if, if it is extreme, <laughs> like not everybody is going to cycle <laughs> for two months and especially not when you have to cross the, you know, the Pyrenees or the Alps, <laughs> that's just a nightmare, but, but there is a way of traveling by train and, and stopping in, in many cities. This is, this is possible. I mean, um, I think Europe. In, in that, uh, even Portugal Spain, and also the Balkan uh, parts uh, of, of, the, the, of the, the continent, the, there is many things to see on the road, actually. So I think. Thanks. Uh, Sarah, you wanted to add something? I saw you unmuted you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, th th that I just really, really thank you for, for the insights. It's actually interesting. And uh, I think the more demand there might be from these student generations, the better we can understand the railway as a real option in our country. And um, on the other hand, um, not only at the student mobility level, but to mitigate um, carbon emissions, for instance, more people can, um, there, are, there are many companies in Portugal and Spain who are, like we say, Iberized. I mean, they, they work at the, the Iberian Peninsula level and uh, there are lots of, uh, there is actual commute between Lisbon or Portugal and Madrid, for instance. And um, well, I think that's, and the planes are, are, are flying with the mostly people that go for, for work purposes. So I think this might be a lesson to take and a path to walk, but uh, yeah we're on it <laughs> and i actually think universities are are fundamental for for um in order to study and provide the best information possible for the railway to be the best um the best option there is for travel between countries <laughs> thank you thanks and yeah, it's, it's, but, but sometimes, you know, we have this um, counter argument saying that in order for our students to be uh, providers or to be advocates of um, uh, green, uh, greener uh, businesses and uh, to be advocates of uh, peace in the world, then we have to expose them with what the world is. And there are some people saying that's that's crucial for our students to discover the world so that when they come back, they're aware of all the different realities and uh, kind of uh, alterity. That is not the same when staying closer. So that's also an argument which is interesting, but sometimes with, I don't know, I'm just <laughs> giving some food for thought because there is no good answers, but I don't know what it puts in your mind. Well, for instance, um, I mean, going abroad is, I mean, you can take a flight and then spend two months traveling only by train. I mean, in Asia, you can travel by train. I mean, there is many countries where you can actually travel uh, by train or so. I think maybe the idea is to, it's, it's not to say, okay, 
it's bad to take the, the plane to go here or there is okay how do you do what how do you plan your journey so mm -hmm. that you can uh, you can have this plane trip to uh, a far away destination and then you go around for uh, with with uh, greener uh, means of transportation so so there is a contradiction that's for sure but we can work within this contradiction and 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 try to um, say okay you, you you can you can go to a faraway destination but then you can act like you are doing here in Europe for example by traveling by train yeah yeah, and I think we also have a challenge being that um, to take like a sec example. So as I told you earlier, we have a campus in Singapore. And when our students go to Singapore, in fact, they are very numerous. And when they're there, they have the habit to stay together. So their experience of being abroad means being abroad in within French ESSEC group. So the experience of being abroad is not uh, that, uh, is not the one that we would like them to, to get in terms of, uh, I mean, interculturality and uh, meeting with other people and so on. I don't know if it's something that you also have experienced or because I think that there's also um, within this uh, mobility topic, there's also um, another. Uh, topic being, okay, we, our students go abroad, how do we make this experience very transformative and how do we make this experience a way to confront with other cultures? And this is not always the case, so that's also, also something we're thinking about. I don't know if it's a reflection you have in your own universities. Well, for the University of Ljubljana, I don't see that as a problem because we don't have so many students who would go into the into the same destination as a group. So the, there is one, perhaps two students going at the same time to the same destination or to the same university. So, uh, but we can see that with our in incoming students. Uh, I live in the city center and I walk around uh, quite a bit and I every day I see group of students talking Spanish. So it means they're Spanish students and they, they tend to stay together and do things together. So it's like a little Spanish community in Ljubljana uh, wandering around or uh, traveling around Slovenia as well. So they do a lot of excursions and they're having a great time. But I, I agree with you, it's not the same experience for them because they don't mix with others so much and they don't mix with locals almost at all and that mm. that's a pity it might be that we are to blame as well as a nation we are perhaps not so open or not so welcoming and i don't know uh perhaps uh, our local students do not uh, want to interfere with them as much as we would imagine they should so it's it's difficult to 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 change this habit uh, and to um, to make uh, uh, for them uh, a better experience, like a real uh, mobility abroad experience. Mm. It's like a little Spain <laughs> inside of uh, our city. But for others, I don't know because I don't see them uh, in groups so much as I see the Spanish people. So I think. Other nations perhaps do use it uh, better, this opportunity that, that is given to them. So I hope so. Yeah. If I can add here, because I, I'm in charge of incoming students yeah. at, in Ljubljana, uh, we, uh, we have a tutoring, a tutor, tutor system. So every foreign student gets Slovenian, Slovenian student as a tutor. So they could uh make advantage of this uh, situation but uh spanish are not <laughs> are not that uh flexible in this way yeah they they really tend to stay together also in student dormitories we mix them 
there are mixed uh, students so with low they they uh, interfere with local students and but um, there are spanish parties going on all the time <laughs> every day yes yeah but in regards to incoming students uh, they we we don't uh, uh, make track of how they arrive to Slovenia mostly from uh, distant from from far the, um, destination that are uh, far from Ljubljana. They come from by by plane, of course, but we advertise then in in Ljubljana to use the city bike. We have this uh, very good city bike system as all around Europe. Uh, and we really advertise this uh, means of transportation. So they do use uh, they local use, trends. Yes. They use it very much. So uh, they are traveling green <laughs> within the city at least. <laughs> yeah. But yes, that's a, a very interesting point to see how we can do as welcoming institutions to better also make the interculturality lively within our own uh, institutions where all the uh, students uh, come in, in our uh, universities. But we have the same, uh, the same thing in, in, at ESSEC. Um, so we welcome a lot of international um, students. We have a very strong Chinese community and a very strong Indian community. And these two communities uh, tend to stay together. And uh, at first they don't know each other, but then this is a small uh, group that is always together. And I guess it's a kind of uh, security for them. So it's quite hard to, to buy Joanna. Uh, it's quite hard to, to go against that, but yes, of course, it raises a lot of questions about um, this uh, this interculturality um, um, questions. But yeah, and maybe I have a last topic that I'd like to to talk to you about. I don't know if in within your institutions there there are some new thinking about uh, what we call in France. Uh, Home, uh, um, home, no, I have the words in French, but it would be like uh, internationalization at home. Yes. And, yeah. And is it uh, something that you started to work it on or only at a state of reflection? We, I, I think we are doing some things within the programs, but when it comes to student mobility, this is not um, something that we, gone uh, very deep into, but I would be interested to have your views on that. Well, for us, as such a big university, it's um, perhaps a bit easier because we have like almost 2000 incoming students every year. So it's automatically internationalization at home because the, the courses are held for that for those students mostly in English, and our students, of course, attend those courses as well. So they already receive like uh, lectures in English. They have schoolmates from abroad. So it's a kind of internationalization at home. And we have a lot of incoming staff mobility as well. So they can experience foreign staff giving lectures to them at home. So this is a this is a kind of good thing that comes with the size of the university and with the, with the large numbers of incoming students. But uh, we are not doing it systematically. So it's like a side effect of being big and receiving many incoming students and staff. So uh, I don't know, what about other universities? How, how do you uh, tackle this problem? Do you have any systematic approach to internationalization at home? I, I believe we are still in the phase of, um, since internationalization used to be looked at from the inside outwards, we are still in the phase of compiling, of starting from the idea of internationalization at home to understand what we have at that level, somehow compiling what we have 
to see if they, these are vectors of international development at home or not, other than having a specific aligned strategy for internationalization at home um, at the moment. And actually it saves us some time and resources since there are things which we believe uh, constitute internationalization at home. However, uh, we have not actually assessed its outcomes properly yet. So no. I think we are on that uh, on that uh, specific phase at the moment, either for curricula um, issues or student mobility. Well, uh, Jose is uh, is the one to talk about, but uh, either for student mobility or international recruitment for full time um, study programs. So we are still assessing the impact of certain. Uh, measures with in the campuses so that uh, we can advance onto a a a real strategy for internationalization. I would like to add something uh, that Sarah said. Uh, and Nova, as uh, we 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 have we have nine schools, and we have a very strong decentralized model and culture. So every every school. As is have his own view, his own problems, and his own approach in this kind of subject. So, I think it's very important to to understand that. Too. And we are trying to uh, to turn around uh, this mentality. So it's a, it's a challenge now. I can say that. Thanks. Yeah, big challenge in the head, of course. <laughs> um, but I think, yeah, Sarah, I think we're quite the same at ESSEC. We're like trying to see what goes into this this name of uh, internationalization, internationalization at home without taking this topic as a as a whole, uh, uh, as a specific one. But yeah, and have you seen any changes due to the COVID situations? What what are the, is it something that accelerates the move towards the uh, reflections on this or I don't know how, of course it, it impacted a lot, a lot uh, of course the mobility of our students uh, and uh, all, the, all the more since they go quite far and uh, there are still some mobilities that are not uh, back on tracks like all our students going, um, to Singapore cannot be hosted there. Our students going to China because there are uh, still some part of China that are not uh, open for, uh, like they're open, but you have to spend, uh, I don't know, two weeks uh, in, in very like closed <laughs> hotels. So um, it had this kind of impacts, but I don't know if we're going to to change a lot uh, after this, uh, when it's down, we hope that it will be done day. But uh, I don't know if it will change a lot the way that we think about mobility. So maybe I don't know if you if you have um, seen some big changes in the way to handle this topic, or you're waiting for it to be back to normal. Well, first of all, uh, in Nova Lisbon, uh, yes, it, it has a, a big impact, this pandemic situation, of course. And the major impact that we felt was in international credit mobilities and other, other kind of mobilities uh, for Asia. Yeah, it was terrible. And for another continent too, uh, North America was very, very complicated too, Australia, etc. And in other end, I would like to underline something that we, we found. People still want to do it. They still want to travel. They, they'll still want to, to, to go to, to another countries. Even sometimes they, they were, are expecting some lockdowns, but they, they'll still want to do it. Uh, maybe because they, they think it was something like uh, an once in a lifetime opportunity 
I don't know, but uh, and then we, we have to, to find a way for them to to do the all the, the mobilities, but in a responsible way, if, if you know what I mean. So I would like to underline this. And now uh, we are starting to to go back to normal again in Europe, not outside Europe, in Europe. But now uh, Erasmus program have some, everybody knows that, have some different kind of mobilities, blended mobility, short mobilities for, uh, uh, for, for students, not only for staff. So we are trying to understand uh, what's the new normal. I hate this expression, but what's the new normal anyway? Yes, uh, for Ljubljana, I have to agree with uh, Jose, it, it, it was just the same. The student mobility numbers dropped by, I don't know, 40% when the pandemic uh, striked. Uh, and then now we are back to almost normal. We are back to 90% of the uh, numbers before, before COVID. But for the credit mobility, we are still struggling. We have uh, big uh, problems to realize the mobilities that we that were awarded to us. So mostly we can exchange student staff with uh, the Balkans, the Balkan uh, region. There uh, we experienced uh, very, very few problems. But for other countries, yes, it's it's quite, uh, it's almost a mission impossible to get student and staff from there and to send them. So we did uh, have some mobilities with Russia this year, and uh, I don't know, was it Morocco? Yes, Morocco, thank you, Helena. Yes, uh, and, uh, but the, the majority, majority of mobilities will not be, uh, will not, we will not manage to, to, to have them, and we will have to, uh, to give money back to the national agency. But uh, we cannot help it. It's, uh, it's, uh, the problem is bigger than, <laughs> than uh, our capacity of solving it, so yeah. But thank God, thanks God for the for the European students. They are willing to travel, and they they want to travel. They want to go on mobility, and we support them with every mean that we have. So yes, we are we are glad about that. They will go even with bikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the point. <laughs> uh, well. Um... Thanks a lot. I think I, I'm done with all my questions or the topics I wanted to raise. Is there, uh, I don't know, some, someone that wants to add something and to, to share some views or, I don't know, anything else to conclude? Well, so if not, I'm going to thank you a lot. It was very nice to have this uh, conversation. So thanks to have uh, participated. And um, yes, let's hope that, uh, yes, first of all, we managed to keep on sending our uh, students abroad. And uh, let's assume that we're going to do it uh, more and more uh, environmentally when we like. <laughs> and, uh, Yes, that's a big challenge of our uh, the coming generation. So I hope we can uh, support that. And thanks a lot, yes, for today. And it was uh, nice to meet you and to have this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. Nice it was to very meet you. nice. Yes, thank you thank very you. much. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a good Bye. weekend Bye. if we don't yeah, talk. Yeah, have a good weekend. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.